Go to tapjars.com to learn dreams, engage my services, and support the channel. So there are some cases where you might want to check if a value is within some range. And to do it, there's not really like a gadget that will easily do it. There's not, not a calculator mode or anything like that. So there's um, a number of ways you can do it for fairly cheap. Some are more kind of complicated uh, than others, but it all it's all fairly simple. So I'll kind of go through how those work. So we have this um, output on this chip just to represent it that it is within the range. And then let's have a value slider for the actual value that we're testing. So one way is to first clamp this within the range. Uh, and we can do that with a value slider. So let's say we can have larger values. So we can have uh, values beyond 0 and 1. But you can set a minimum and maximum value on here. So if you wire that into here, and we just display what that gives us. So if, I, if this is below 0, it's giving us 0. If it's above 0, it gives us the right value until we go beyond 1. And then it just gives us one. So it kind of clamps the va the input value within the minimum and maximum of that value slider. And then outputs the result. So if we check to see if that is the same as the input, so is it equal, then we can wire that in there. So if at the moment this is sending 2.3, it's being clamped to one, and then 1 isn't the same as 2.3, so we're not within the range. Uh, and then if we go down to 1, then it is within the range because it's sending out a 1 from here, and that's the original value. And then down beyond 0, and then it's not within range again. So that's a pretty easy way of doing it. Um, it is inclusive though, so if it's at 0, which is the minimum, then it will be considered within range. So what if you don't want it to be considered within range unless it's above zero or below one? We've still got our input over here, and then we just use simple calculators. So is it above zero? And is it below one? And if both of those are true, then we'll output the thing. So we could use an AND gate. So we can use an AND gate to say, is it below 1 and above 0? Then we'll send a signal. So at the moment it's at 0, so that's it's failing that check. But now it will it will succeed, and then if we go up to 1, it will fail this check and not send a signal. And beyond 1 as well. If you wanted to say, like, it can be 0 or above, and but it must be less than 1 and it can't be 1. So you could do, um, you kind of want to see if it's more than z zero or equal to zero. And we could just wire those into the same thing, and that's the same thing as saying or. So now when it's a zero, it's being allowed through. And when it goes beyond one, or when it gets to one or beyond, then it's false again, it fails this check. So that's how you can do greater than or equal to. Another way of doing that is to uh, check if it's less than, which basically means it's not greater than or equal to, it's less than. And then say not. So it's not less than zero, so it must be equal to zero, or it must be greater than zero. So that's another way of doing that. And now it's the same, it's allowing 0 or above, and it's not allowing 1 or above. Let's put it back to, it has to be uh, greater than 0 or, and less than 1, like that. Um, instead of this AND gate, we can actually skip this and wire this into the power of this, like that. And then just wire that into there. So what's happen then, happening now is, first it checks if it's greater than 0, and if it is then it, it checks to see if it's less than one. And if it, so it can't be, it can't send a signal from here unless it's already more than zero. So this is the same as doing an AND gate in this case, and then we just wire it to the um, output. And you can have like any combination of those you want. Yeah, so if you wanted to just come and use this asset, then you can, you'll 
perfectly welcome to do so. It's got like inputs for the actual value and input for the upper bound and lower bound because they're kind of handled differently within these different solutions. But but I'd probably recommend if you want to have a look at these to just like learn from them and understand them and then use them like without any of this stuff. Just use that in within your logic and you can run it um, and it will just be cheaper for thermo. You'd, you don't need like a whole chip just to do this uh, simple thing. And you can remember with the uh, value sliders, you can turn off the uh, slider visible in scene, which just means like this slider, you can not You can use this slider in edit mode. And when you turn it off, you just don't see that slider. So you can make it all compact and stuff just like that. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something interesting. Go to patreon.com slash tapgiles to learn something new every day.